This is mini lecture 4a. We'll be starting unit 2, which is on the language and mathematics of healthcare, and chapter 4 is on medical terminology. Medical terminology is, of course, a language used by healthcare professionals. It can be complex, it includes terms, abbreviations, and symbols, but it's very important as a healthcare provider practitioner to use precise terms. Um, we want to avoid confusion, we want to avoid errors, so we must be precise. Typically you do not use medical terminology when communicating with patients. We use what is sometimes referred to as kitchen table language, so more common language for most patients. Understanding medical terminology begins with understanding how terms are built or their building blocks. There are different word parts and you see them illustrated here. The word root gives the word its main meaning and every medical term has at least one root. Some have more than one root and it refers to a structure and function of the body. The combining form is that word root plus a vowel most typically O. So you see some examples of combining forms here. Dento, pulmono, cardio. What word part is cardi? It is the root. Cardio would be the combining form. The suffix attaches to the end and changed changes the meaning or adds to the meaning. So their suffix can refer to a number of different things like procedures, um, for example. All medical terms have a suffix. So all medical terms have a root and a suffix. Logi, pathy are examples of um, a suffix in these particular medical words. Which of the following suffixes means pain? It is C, algia. Side is to kill or destroy, and ickle is pertaining to, but algia means pain. The prefix attaches to the beginning of the word root and combining forms to add to or change the meaning. Many medical terms have prefixes, but not all medical terms. Here you see hyperthyroidism, and hyper, meaning higher than normal, is the prefix. In the word hypothyroidism, what part is hypo? It is the prefix. The root is thyroid. Ism, meaning condition, is the suffix. What is usually advised for deciphering medical terms is to start from the right and work left. So you start with the suffix, then the root, and the prefix. Here are some examples of these building blocks. Cardiology, cardiology polyarthritis, polyarthritis, echocardiogram, echocardiogram. Cardiology, of course, means the study of the heart. Polyarthritis means inflammation of many joints. And if a patient is having intercostal pain, where would the pain be located? So that's an example of a healthcare professional having to um, interpret, translate this medical term. It means between the ribs. All is pertaining to, rib is cost, and inter is between. Eponyms are medical terms named for people who discovered that named item. So Alzheimer's disease, the Heimlich maneuver, Hodgkin's disease are a few examples. And there are everyday words that have a special meaning in medicine, such as sign, acute, and benign. When we look at drugs, there are several names for each drug, the generic, the trade, the chemical, and the official. So Tylenol is the which one of those? It's the trade name. 
the generic and official are acetaminophen. Spelling and pronunciation is important because some words sound the same but are spelled differently. One letter can completely change the meaning. So you need to, to remember not only what the word means but its pronunciation and its plural form as well. What is the guideline for making a plural form if the term ends in X or X? So which do you think it is? It is B. X or X you change to ISIS. Medical abbreviations include symbols as well. Um, so this is the shorthand that we can use in the facility, but we should be very careful to only use those on the facility's approved list. It can't be used if it's not on the approved list. We don't want to use texting abbreviations. We do use acronyms like MRI and LASER. If the provider writes the order up ad lib, it means the patient's always to walk with the assistance of a healthcare professional. That's false. Ad lib means freely or at will. So this means the patient can get up and move about at their own will. The symbol shown here, a little circle with a kind of arrow attached means male. That's correct. And you also see the symbol for female. So there's also a, not only a prove list, but a do not use list. These are easily confused abbreviations and they can cause very serious errors. So you see on this do not use list, um, U for unit, because it can be mistaken for a zero. IU, it can be mistaken for IV, so you have to write those out. QD, QD, um, QOD, it can be mistaken for each other, so you should write daily or every other day. Trailing zero, okay, because you can miss the decimal point, so never use a trailing zero. You never put a zero in after the decimal point, if that's the final um, number to the right. And MS can mean a couple of different things. So you have to write out whether you're talking about morphine sulfate or magnesium sulfate. Why are certain abbreviation symbols and dose designations never to be used? It is because they've led to frequent errors. Some of the things that you can um, use to become more competent at medical terminology is a medical dictionary. The actual hard copy medical dictionaries are very nice. They're almost little mini encyclopedias, but there are electronic versions as well. And it's really, really important to study every day. You need to practice. You need to create flashcards visual cues, watch YouTube videos, even use a coloring book. This is memorization, at least as far as the meaning of the word roots, suffixes, prefixes.